You were told Liz Truss crashed Britain's economy. You were told Kwasi Kwarteng's mini budget was the cause of soaring bond yields or interest rates. So why is it that today we see bond yields reaching the same dizzying heights they reached last October? Because you were told a lie. Cast your minds back to the day after the budget was announced. Newspapers claimed, at last, a true Tory budget and a budget to get Britain's economy booming. But within days, Liz Truss was quickly booted out of office to be replaced by Rishi Sunak before her policies were given a chance to work. Rishi told us his strategy was better, yet six months down the road we are even worse off. Interest rates are expected to be at even higher levels than they were when Liz Truss was in charge. Of course, interest rates needed to rise anyway, as they are doing around the world to stave off inflation. The Bank of England were too slow to react. They only had one job, to control inflation, and they failed. But Sunak and Hunt's policies ensure these crippling interest rates now are coupled with a stunted economy. Whilst Liz Truss's budget was all about getting Britain growing again, and her low-tax agenda was about promoting aspiration and investment, we are told by Jeremy Hunt that we need a recession to stop prices continuing to rise. This is economics of the madhouse. At the time of Truss's mini-budget, financial markets had become unstable in Britain because the UK's pension industry had invested more than any country in the world in extremely risky investments which would collapse in value as interest rates rose. The crisis of these liability-driven investments, or LDIs, happened coincidentally just one day before the mini-budget, and most people, not having a clue what LDIs were, misattributed the market turmoil to Truss's budget. The mainstream media are not even talking about this. Quite frankly, I don't think they understand it. To be clear, the amount of money UK pension funds invested in these risky assets is £1.6 trillion. Pounds. That's enormous. It's the same as our entire national debt. What's more, the Bank of England had its own entire pension fund worth £5 billion pounds invested in LDIs last summer. It's quite astonishing that our central bank, which you'd expect to act prudently, could put all its own eggs in this one basket. These are the people managing our nation's finances. Depressing. Liz Truss did not have support from many in her own party. Clearly, they failed to understand the economics. Immediately after the budget, Michael Gove claimed that cutting taxes were not Conservative. <laughs> I'm sure he has previously described the Conservatives as the party of low tax. Which is it, Michael? We can't be both. Mel Stride, chair of the Treasury Select Committee, complained that Liz Truss's plans could not be relied upon without forecasts, despite the fact that almost every forecast the Office for Budget Responsibility has made, and the IMF, has to be changed within months of them making it. Forecasts are only as good as the models used to make them, and everyone knows the OBR's model is utterly flawed. And senior Tory Rob Halfon, for example, claimed that Liz Truss was acting like a libertarian jihadist. If Liz wanted to set fire to the economic strategy that has delivered no growth for the UK for the last 12 years of Tory rule, count me in. It is utter madness that we don't focus on growing our economy. It's only by growing our economy that we yield tax revenues to pay for public services. By stifling business growth with high taxes and recession, there is no hope for the future. Conservatives, if you're not going to bring back Liz Truss, please bring back her policies urgently. It was a true Tory budget, and if we'd followed that path, we would already be on the road to recovery.